I'm here with Gary Reynolds, Chief Investment Officer at Courtiers, to follow up on his recent analysis on the UK economy and the fact that Britain's just not working. Gary, hi. Uh, a couple of questions. We'll start with this one. How long do you think the forecast of high rates of inflation might last and how are they likely to affect investment performance? Well, what was interesting last week, Leo, was that um, in the, the Bank of England issued its, its forecast, uh, uh, the, the latest quarterly forecast at the time, it was uh, announcing a 0.5% increase in interest rates. And um, it's the gloomiest thing I've ever seen come out of a, a central bank. Now, normally, central bankers don't get hooked up with making too many predictions because they, uh, the, the public can easily believe they know what they're talking about and then it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I, I was quite shocked at the extent of the recession that the Bank of England is, is predicting. Um, the bank is also expecting that inflation will remain high for the next year. I don't think that's an unreasonable projection. Um, and it's saying that inflation is likely to be around 9 to 10% come the uh, Q3 2023, when it also thinks we'll have experienced a recession of, of a 2% decline in, in GDP. Now, thereafter, the bank thinks that, that inflation is going to go back down to 2% very quickly. Now, I would I contend that I think the Bank of England have probably got this wrong. Um, I think that a bit more of this is transitory. I think the the central bankers around the world have just bottled it, having described inflation as transitory last year and then found it was approaching double digits and panicked into not wanting to be seen as the Arthur Burns of the Fed in the 1970s when it was a case of too little interest rates too late and they never got hold of inflation until Volcker took over in the Fed in the 80s. So I, I, I'm going to put my neck on the block here and say, I think inflation will come down from these current levels a bit faster than the bank expects. And there are there is evidence in commodities markets that oil prices coming down and uh, copper prices decline. You know, there, there's evidence that, that, that there are declines afoot. You know, even wheat and corn prices have dropped um, compared to the, the spring values. Um, but I don't see inflation getting down to the 2% level that the Bank of England is talking about. And I think in this, they're overconfident. I think inflation is going to get a bit stickier from here on in. And the reasons for that are the reasons I set out in that paper last week when I made the point that we've, just, we've had insufficient, insufficient um, investment in, in, in productive capacity in this country. And we've had insufficient new uh, growth in our labour market to fulfil the jobs that are now on demand. So I short answer, it will come back a bit quicker from these very high levels, but it's not going back to 2% anytime soon. You mentioned the um, reduction in investment, the decline in investment, and your chart G uh, shows that that plateaued following Brexit and then declines. Meanwhile, total investment seems to be climbing. Um, so. What's the difference between the total investment and the business, business investment and also transport considering road, rail networks, etc. That falls into business investment, doesn't it? Which means if there's a decline in that, the government's not, the government's not spending money on improving those networks. Yeah, so simple way to look at this. Well, well total investment can invest what, what, what families invest in property and that type of thing. Um, but you know, the productive stuff is really in the private sector. So you look at business investment if you want to see an improvement in productivity. Um, government increases investment, that will come through in total investment figures. But, you know, anybody who believes the government can invest to improve sufficient uh, efficiency is living in cloud cuckoo land. You know, one of the reasons that the, the Western democracies have got very, very good track records on productivity is because most of the investing is done by the business sector. Not by, not by the state. So you really don't want the state doing too much. You want the business sector doing a lot of it. And as you can see from those figures, the business sector um, uh, got very, very nervous post-Brexit and just wasn't investing as much as they were pre-Brexit. And the productivity uh, chart F shows that um, productivity nose dives from 2008, um, where the reduction of business investment kicks off around 2016. So what's the story? before Brexit in that, that drop? 
to 0.5 percent. Pre-Brexit, you've got you'll also see pre-Brexit you had an improvement in in you had a constant increase in in investment, or it was a rising rising nominal amount of investment. Probably still, uh, we were still lagging behind lots of our G7 competitors in terms of the amount we're investing in this country. And you had a lot of you know over the over the previous 10, 20 years. Uh, you'd had a lot of car companies, for example, investing in productive capacity in, in, in this country and very successfully so. Um, but post Brexit, all that was 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 brought into uh, into question as to what the future would look like. And then when businesses don't have certainty, they reign, you know, they, they, they reign in spending and they certainly reign in capital spending because they want to keep their capital liquid for emergencies. And and so they just they for whatever reason, Leo, they didn't invest as much. Now, I, I, I'm, I just want to, just in case anybody is watching this, thinking that I'm a a, a, a Ramona, um, I am not. Uh, anyone, I wrote that piece in the spring of 2016 about Brexit. I stand by it. Um, I voted Remain, but I'm more than happy for a, a, a Brexit policy that means we have more free trade. But Brexit needed to be handled better. And it doesn't matter whether you're a Remainer or or a or a or a, a, a Brexiteer. The, the the truth is that it's been handled pretty appallingly since we voted to go out in 2016. And I think that has caused the problem with business investment. Um, we've not been able to articulate what our future looks like outside of the EU, and we needed to do that better to get companies investing here. Thanks, Gary. Um, declining workforce do you expect that to continue well you know what i never understand with this leo is why do we differentiate between skill sets oh you can come to this country say our politicians providing you're a highly skilled person with with high levels of education but we don't want to bring you over if you're simply going to stand pouring cups of coffee in a cafe or serve in a restaurant and what's the net effect of that Coffee prices have gone up because cafes have to pay a lot more to staff to get them in, in the first, if they can find them. And some restaurants have struggled to reopen post, post the lockdowns. So the government need to wake up and smell the coffee, literally. We need more people in this country. And, and, and if we're not going to do the work, if, if the indigenous people are not going to do the work, then let's get somebody over that will do it. And, and if you don't do that, you curb... Uh, you, 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 you reduce your supply potential in, in the economy. So it really needs some, some sensible thinking and not, not this wretched um, posturing by politicians that want to appeal to a certain type of voter that is just anti-immigration. Yes, have controls by all means, but let's be mindful. Let's get people over here to do the jobs if we haven't got the people to do them ourselves. That by the way, is a sign of a healthy economy, whether whether it's whether it's Victorian Britain or Rome, people tend to want to go and work for the, the economies that are doing the best. So the fact that people want to be here is a is a good sign. The moment we can't find anyone to come over and doesn't want to come to this country and do jobs and be very careful because it means we're in a mess. Gary, so how does all this affect the funds, investment strategies, clients, investments and portfolios? I think that interest rates are, are not going back down to the very low levels we saw through the summer of 2020. Um, there was a trend up in interest rates at the end of 2019 before the pandemic came along and drove them back down again. And I think what you're seeing now is the end of a 30 year um, uh, period where there's been gradually declining interest rates down to record all time lows. You know, they were the lowest in this country since records began. And that goes to about to about 1700. And you're getting a good old dose of mean reversion. Um, and what that means is that, uh, you know, if you're holding on to long dated bonds in the hope that interest rates are going back down to 0.5 percent in short order, then be very careful because if you're holding long dated gilt, you, you've already taken a hit of about 22 and a half percent so far in 2022 alone. And um, as I said, about a year, 18 months ago, if 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 gilts, if gilt yields return to their long term average, which is long bond yields of about four to four and a half percent, then holders of them will lose about 50 percent of their value. 
So you're only halfway there yet if you're holding them. You have to be very careful in this marketplace. And the other thing I would say is, despite the fact there's a lot of difficulties out there, a lot of stocks have been marked down quite viciously during this year. So we are actually on investment team now are beginning to find lots of very, very good companies that we're buying on very low levels of price to earnings, price to cash flow with strong balance sheets. And I think that augurs well for the future. So it's going to be choppy for, for, the, for the foreseeable future, particularly as you've got a new, lead, new prime minister coming in soon and nobody knows exactly how that's going to work out. You Then as you get to the 2024 election in this country, will you have a change of government? So there's a lot on the go and a lot of choppy waters to to navigate, but there's 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 good opportunities. As Warren Buffett always says, volatility in markets is your friend because very often it will throw up uh, really good businesses to buy at decent prices. And um, you know we, we, we'll cover more of this in the next few months and certainly in a lot of detail at the December client seminars um, uh, where we will give some specific examples as we normally do. But uh, that, yeah, there's that, there's a lot of very exciting stuff there, Leo. So, I am I am concerned at the type of issues that we've got to get through economically, but at the same time, excited by what we're holding in portfolios at the moment. Gary, thank you very much. Um, to our viewers, if you do have any further questions, please let us know, uh, and we'll put those across to the investment team. Gary, thanks again. Talk to you soon.